What is disaster response? Why do we do humanitarian action? Di ba charity ang disaster relief? Di ba siya disempowering at ginagawang palaasa ang mga komunidad sa mga epal na politiko o mga organisasyon? Di ba sabi walang lugar ang partisipasyon sa disaster response? Kahit nga appreciative inquiry, di raw akma sa panahon ng emergency. So why do we even have to discuss disaster response in the context of community development? In an ongoing research, I asked several national and local development organizations who have conducted disaster response, what is humanitarian action? Their answer was providing immediate aid and service to people affected by disasters to save lives and reduce suffering. This is a textbook answer on the definition of humanitarian action. But what is interesting is that there is an underlying narrative that responders assumed Disaster response was supposed to be charity or dole out, temporary, quick and time bound, apolitical, logistics heavy, walang capacity building, and it's performed by expert humanitarian professionals. Kung ang mga narratiba na ito ang umiiral sa proyekto na ginagawa ng gobyerno o malaking korporasyon, walang atubili tayong pupunta sa klasada babansagan bilang top-down development aggression ito. These narratives negatively impact affected communities. It deprives local development actors from accessing resources for disaster response. By having outsiders and foreigners conduct large-scale disaster responses, decades of community development work are undermined in the name of humanitarian action. But humanitarian standards have not only defined technical benchmarks, it has also promoted rights-based approaches for downward accountability to affected communities. The introduction of disaster risk reduction has put a spotlight on vulnerabilities and the underlying role of poverty and inequality. Dahil dito, dahan-dahan binabasag ang mga narratiba kung ano lang dapat ang disaster response. It has also opened opportunities for multiple and process-oriented approaches to reach the more strategic goals of accountability, empowerment, sustainability, and resilience. So again, why do we need to respond during a disaster? To prevent further loss of lives and assets, or otherwise mitigate impact of hazards? To reduce suffering or help reduce vulnerabilities? and to restore livelihoods or enable resilience. After we struggled with the community and organized them towards empowerment, how can we abandon them in times of crisis? Pero magugulat kayo, SOP sa mga humanitarian workers ang mag-evacuate sa panahon ng disaster at naiiwan na kasama ng mga komunidad ay ang mga PO at development NGOs, hindi yung mga humanitarian organizations. We respond because we want to recognize and protect the rights of affected communities. And probably the most basic reason that is forgotten whenever the survivors desperately beg from those with resources, we affirm the dignity of affected people. Nang una kong nakita itong larawan na ito, kumukulo ang dugo ko. Everything you don't want to see in a disaster response was summarized in this one picture. Epal na politiko, walang pagpili sa mga pinakabulnerable, namimigay ng mga relief goods na di akma sa pangangailangan ng mga apektado, nagmimistulang mga hayo pang mga biktima, na iniitsahan lang ng relief goods para sila magagawan. To prevent such bad practices, Our main tool in disaster response is the implementation of plans which were prepared prior to the crisis. The four main humanitarian principles are humanity, neutrality, impartiality, and independence. Humanity is upholding the right of all persons to receive and give assistance simply because they are human beings who have dire needs to survive. 
ang pagpigil ng food aid sa isang nagugutom na komunidad para lang mapalabas ang kanilang mga ka- kaaway o para mapilitan pumanig sa kanilang komunidad ay isang paglabag sa prinsipyo na ito. Impartiality is providing humanitarian assistance in proportion to need and with respect to urgency without discrimination based upon gender, age, race, impairment, ethnicity, and nationality, or by political, religious, or organizational affiliation. Batay dapat ang pagpili ng mga beneficiaryo sa vulnerabilidad at pangangailangan nila, hindi dahil sila ay baluarte sa politiko, mga kapatid sa relihiyon, o mga kakampi sa advokasiya. Naalala ko ang isang komunidad na ayaw sanang bigyan ng relief yung mga nakatira sa bundok pagkatapos ng isang bagyo dahil yung mga nakatira sa bundok daw ang mga illegal loggers at mga nagbibigay paalam para mag-operasyon ng mga minahan, mga industriya na sinisisi nila sa pagbaha sa kapatagan. Pero kahit na progresibo ang advokasiyan natin, labag ito sa impartiality. labag ang ipagkait sa mga tagabundok ang mga relief goods simply because kailangan din nila Neutrality means refraining from giving materials or political support to parties to an armed conflict By being neutral humanitarian organizations are supposedly able to better access communities affected by conflict Ang pagbibigay ng suporta o relief goods ay di dapat nagpapalakas sa isang panig. Kung kaya't binabatikos ang pagsasailalim ng NDRRMC at ng OCD sa Department of National Defense, dahil hindi ito magiging neutral sa mga kalamidad na dulat ng mga away ng military at ng mga rebelde. Independence means acting under the authority of the governing body of the agency. and in the pursuit of the agency's humanitarian mandate. Kahit na nasa pamamahala ng LGU ang komunidad, hindi pwedeng manduhan o pilitin sumunod sa gusto nito ang mga humanitarian organizations. Mahalaga ang koordinasyon, oo, ngunit may sariling mga desisyon at may pananagutan sa kanilang humanitarian actions ang mga humanitarian organization. Other principles observed are meant to enhance accountability of disaster responders to affected communities. This include participation and informed consent, which means ensuring that the intended beneficiaries or their representatives understand and agree with the proposed humanitarian action and its implications. Duty of care, or ensuring that humanitarian assistance meets or exceeds recognized minimum standards pertaining to the well-being of the intended beneficiaries. Duty of care is also practiced for responders themselves since they too are exposed to dangerous and stressful conditions when conducting an emergency response. Witness or reporting on policies or practices that affect the well-being of disaster survivors. Offer redress, or enabling crisis-affected people and staff to raise complaints and responding with appropriate action. Pwede magreklamo at dapat tugunan ang mga ito. Transparency, ensuring that all relevant information is communicated to intended beneficiaries or their representatives and other parties. Complementarity, or operating as a responsible member of a humanitarian assistance community. This is where coordination comes in to reduce redundancy and to ensure equitable distribution of limited resources to the affected populations. These principles are translated into standards for better guidance to responders. Maraming standards. The SPHERE standards and the core humanitarian standards are the two most popularly known by local NGOs and POs. The SPHERE standards provides guidance in designing a disaster response since it provides technical parameters and conditions in various responding modalities. Many local development organizations resonate with the core humanitarian standards 
because it highlights good practice in downward accountability to affected communities. But take note that compliance to standards is not a binding policy, but simply good practice. Maraming local organizations ang nagre-reklamo na ang pagsunod sa sphere standards ay maglilimita sa dami ng maaaring mabigyan ng ayuda. Ito ang nagiging sanhi, tuloy ng away sa loob ng komunidad kung saan lahat ay natamaan naman ng husto ng disaster. The sphere standards is not a measure of humanitarian capacity. Certification to standards is not even required by any donor. Often, only those who are able to access large funding are able to comply with the sphere standards. This gives many the impression that only international organizations have humanitarian capacity. Even the sphere standards is aware that they give this false perception. But to emphasize, the sphere standards is a process meant to reduce bias, to facilitate coordination and understanding of quality aid, transparency, and accountability, and to force responders to really reflect on the needs of affected communities. Kayo, anong tingin nyo? Baka may mga katanungan kayo. <laughs>